Have you seen the new echo light trainer? Of course I did, mate. I'm in the business. They didn't give too much away, but it does look pretty exciting. Did you watch it? Of course I watched it, pal. Well, mate, they didn't do too well in that trailer. Yeah. Listen, right? Close your eyes. Close your eyes? Yeah. Look at this kid. I see fire. She sees fire. Bruh. This geezer ain't even closed his eyes yet. Oh, she's not seen anything. What's going on? He's already failed his training. He hasn't even begun yet. Come on, yeah. Star Wars, man. I mean, the geezer can't even close his eyes and you're starting off the trailer like that. No. <laughs> What's going on guys, it's Cal here from Chaos Areas. We are in episode 15 of the Warehouse Vlog. We're starting up in the recreational space today. There were some things that I forgot to mention in the last episode, one of which was the addition of our access hatch. Why might we need an access hatch, you ask? Obviously, we've got scaffolding around the building now. It's easy to go around that to gain access to the roof. But when the scaffolding is taken down, which we hope to do at the end of this month, we still might need access up onto the roof. Cleaning the solar panels, installing the solar panels and so on. So we've got an access hatch here, which will always be here. Literally, just go up through there and you can get onto the roof. We have to put some safety there as well, but that'll be for maintenance purposes. And every time I look up here, it just kind of reminds me of the end of season one of Lost. Do you ever watch Lost, Jamie? No. You've never seen Lost? One of the greatest shows, but also one of the most frustrating shows. But it kind of reminds me of that scene where they break open the hatch. And then season two starts with that music of the Scottish geezer. You gotta make your own kind of music. Jesus Christ, Jamie. The roofers had also been making some accessories for the roofing structure, like the hoppers for the down pipes. I mentioned it in the last episode. So these are the little hoppers. So these kind of sit flat against the wall. They collect water, goes down the down pipes, almost like a megaphone. Be like, get your hot dogs. That was actually stupidly loud. It can also be a hat. No, it can't. How's it going, Liam? Yeah, we're good. Are you good? Yeah. Are the roofers out there? Uh, no, they've gone for breakfast. They've gone for breakfast, yeah. yeah. I'm hungry too. <laughs> You can always take me for breakfast, girl. Don't be so cheeky. Tell you what, though, calf would be unreal right now. <gasps> Sausage, egg sandwich, soft eggs on crusty. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Right, back on track, back to the episode. Man, I've been dreaming of this day since the warehouse started. The fact that it's been installed now and put in just gets me unbelievably excited. Just look at it. All nice glass. Same color as the roof, of course. Anthracite gray is what we use. And it just completely changes the feel of the space. And weirdly enough, it's much warmer in here. Triple glazing and it's solar neutral glass, so it's clear, lets the light come through, but it's keeping a lot of that warmth. And it just looks the absolute you might need to bleep that out, Jamie. But there is a bit of a white elephant in the room, which we kind of overlooked. This particular piece of the steel structure it is a bit of an eyesore. It has to be there. It's part of the steel structure. So we need these crank beams in place on the mezzanine. We just got to kind of figure out a nice way to hide it. My initial idea was, because all of this is going to be plasterboarded, my idea was maybe to use some like stainless steel sheet and kind of clad it. So it looks a bit industrial, bit kind of workshoppy, but it hides the steel. You know, you don't want to see the, the web of the steel. That'll be plasterboarded the same on the other side, but this middle one, we need to do something clever with this. Maybe I'm just being a bit over obsessive about it, but if you've got some good ideas, guys, leave some comments below because I'll certainly consider it. Do you know what we'll do? We should go out onto the roof, Jamie, and we should have a closer look at what it looks like from the outside. Let's do it. To the roof! I mean, look at that, Jamie. I never actually thought in my 30 years of life that I would ever get so excited about something as simple as a ridge roof lantern. But, I mean, come on, man. It just completely changes the look of that particular aspect of the building. Now, considering our first quotes for that sort of thing was like 30, 40 grand, and we got it for like 11,000 pounds. It was made in Europe and shipped over here. And just look at the quality. They came and installed it quickly. I'm so happy with how that's turned out. I'm just like, <coughs> and whilst we're up here, you can see we've also started finishing this off. We did have to put a little ladder rail for scaffolding here so that the guys could work safely. And soon they'll get all the flashing done around the skylight and the last of our skylights can go in. Ooh, baby. Now on the ground floor for the next part of the slab, we put this DPM sheeting down 
and then we use these chairs that hold the steel mesh in place and there's insulation underneath that DPM, that membrane. And basically this whole area gets filled like this and then the concrete's poured in and the mesh essentially reinforces everything. This is a reinforcement product. So reinforces the concrete, keeps it nice and strong. And we put some expanding foam in the middle to compensate for expansion on the concrete. Initially, we did want to pour just this part of the slab. So up to these, get out of here, up to these steel beams. But because we're kind of trying to get as much space as we can, we've decided to pour the whole slab. So this one's actually bigger than the previous one we poured before. It's going to change the space completely and it's going to allow us a bit more space to tidy up a bit more because we kind of have to shift everything into any available space we've got when we're pouring a slab like this. Then on Monday, we've got our good old friend Dan. Dan! 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 who's gonna help us break out the rest of the concrete slab so that we can pour the final one, which will be here, the slope and everything. We've got George and NG working at the minute on the last bit of block work around the staircase. This will be the last part that we need to pour, but this one should be scheduled in for around next week. And we're also gonna power float that one. So it'll be silky smooth and beautiful. And we'll go walk over here into the first big slab that we poured. We'll walk the plank. <laughs> So the only thing that's changed in the inventory space is that we've protected the floor by putting some protective sheeting down. We've got Henry the humidifier running strong as ever, collecting any moisture that's down here. And we've put some bricks out here just to save space and load out a little bit. This is gonna be a bit of a storage area for the time being, but we have also put the wall up, the block work to separate the inventory space from the space next door. Now the space next door was intended to be a showroom, but if you follow me around there now, I'll explain why we might not do that actually. So, so despite the fact that we design lightsabers and are able to produce an engineer and so on, everything that we kind of produce is kind of, you know, this big. And I should reword that a different way. What we produce isn't to huge scale. And when you're designing a building like this, it's kind of difficult to gauge the size of the space until you're standing in it. Now, this was intended to be a showroom, but I mean, as you can see, this is a massive space. It's too big. Too big. It's too big. It must be 12 meters deep, maybe. And it's about two and a half, maybe two and a half, three meters wide. Now to have this as a showroom is kind of pointless to be honest, because number one, God knows the amount of lightsabers you could fit on this wall. And when you've got a warehouse or an industrial space or a building that's critical to your business, you kind of want to get the maximum output per square foot. Now I know we've got the recreational space upstairs, which is a really large space. And I always wanted that to be recreational, a place for people to relax. But downstairs, where we're doing the work, where we're packing orders, we kind of need to utilize the space in the most efficient way as possible. So let me know what you guys think. I mean, this space is really, really big. I was thinking that this could be the actual 3D printing area. So we would have the 3D printers, we could have the fuse printer at the back there, because it needs to be isolated off because of things like dust. The particles are very small. We can put the venting out straight out through the wall because it's outside on the other side of that wall. We could have the FDM printers along here, any resin printers, some tables for taking off supports. And the good thing about that is, is that when we've taken those printers off, the mailing dispatch room is right next to it. We would just be picking items from here, going out to the mailing dispatch room and packing them instead of going upstairs to where I was thinking of putting the 3D printing room. So I think that this is gonna be utilized more as a workable space instead of somewhere like a showroom. And plus, when you bring people in, you wanna take them upstairs, they can walk through the nice corridor into the recreational space and maybe view some sabers there. Or we have another room upstairs, the secondary part of the office, that could be the showroom. And we can have nice U-shaped cabinets with lightsabers in there. Let me know what you guys think, leave a comment below. Now this is a very exciting part. This is the last bit of block work that we were doing. Last week's episode, we had exposed this area ready for the new reinforced concrete beam. We poured the concrete and George has done his lovely facing work on the outside here and we're doing the last bit of block work. Pretty surreal to see the building come to this point as this was the very last panel that we had to do. Dad has remounted the electrical box, the hero himself. Say hello, Dad. Hiya. And he's been working very, very hard getting all this sorted. So that is everything in terms of the block work for the exterior of the building. We're going to crack on with this and fit. What'd you say? No, it's right. I'm talking to somebody. You're interrupting me, buddy. Be a part of the outro this time. Okay. All right. So you got to. So you got to say. Yeah. That's it for today, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next episode. Peace.
That's too much. <laughs> That's it for today, guys. Yeah. And then stop, and then I'll do the And next. you can say like and subscribe to see more, yeah. and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. And action. That's it for today, guys. Um, like and surprise, Pete. Like, like and subscribe. surprise? <laughs> like and subscribe. Like and surprise. <laughs> like and surprise. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe, please. Yes. Catch you on the next one. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace. So that is everything left to do with the block work. We'll get that finished. George is gonna be going and doing some other jobs in the next couple of weeks. Is that fire behind me? What's going on? Yeah, like, guys, like, it's like fire. Look at that, eh? Here we are on the plains of the African Serengeti. Two males using fire to harvest their prey. Here we go. Give it some. Oh, no, that's completely melted. You think blowing on that is going to fix it? No, I've got to cool it down. So Look what's happened to it.